Hi, I'm Pastor Kurt, and this is your five-minute Bible study. Today, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 27, verses 11 through 44. So this is a big chunk of text here. This is Jesus' trial before Pilate and his crucifixion. So there's a lot going on here, and I don't have time in a five-minute Bible study to talk about all of it. So I want us to focus just for the next few minutes on one little detail in this story, and that is the recurring title of King of the Jews. When Jesus comes before Pilate, this is Pilate's kind of initial question to him. Are you the King of the Jews? Now, Pilate only asks this because this is a political question. Pilate doesn't really care about the theological stuff. He doesn't ask, are you the Messiah? Are you here to save people? No, he asks the political question about kingship because Pilate sees himself to be in charge. So there can't be more than one person in charge. So he asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? This line, king of the Jews, shows up multiple times in this passion narrative, and it's always used in a mocking kind of sense. Pilate eventually comes to realize that Jesus might be deluded or foolish, but he's nobody important. He's not really a king. He's not really a threat. Well, of course, the crowd calls for his head. Pilate initially refuses, but then eventually gives in, hands him over to the soldiers. The soldiers end up continuing this king of the Jews phrase. Not only do they beat him, calling him, hail king of the Jews, and kind of make fun of him, but they strip him of his clothes, they give him a scarlet robe, they make him hold this reed, and they put this crown of thorns on him. Now, we all know about the crown of thorns, but think about the other two things that they give him. They give him a scarlet robe. Now, actual kings wore purple. That was the sign of royalty. So wearing a scarlet robe was kind of like wearing a pretend robe. Think about like, when, when kids dress up as, like, kings or queens or princesses, they might kind of look like them, but they're really not. This is kind of what they're doing with Jesus. They give him this kind of make-believe king robe. They give him this reed, which is a very pathetic scepter. And then, of course, they give him this mockery of a crown, which is made of thorns. So they dress him up as a fool, and they say, Hail, King of the Jews! They're showing absolutely no respect for him. They're making fun of him. Then, when Jesus is crucified, the sign on the cross says the King of the Jews. Jesus is a laughingstock. While he's dying, People laugh at him and make fun of him and ridicule him. They see him as a joke. Yes, we know that people made these comments to him, but sometimes we forget why. Sometimes we forget why they're ridiculing him. Because they see this sign that says the king of the Jews, and it's like, how in the world is this guy a king? He's kind of a pathetic king if he's any king at all. Well, that sign and that phrase, the king of the Jews, is in fact true. Because Jesus is the king, just not the kind of king we normally expect. If you think way back to the Old Testament and all of the times of the kings back then, we hear about a lot of human kings and all of their flaws and problems and their sins and their abuse of power and all of this stuff that just comes with being human and making poor choices. Jesus is not like that. He is not like any human king we've ever seen or ever will see. 
Instead, he is the king who dies for his people. This is what makes it so incredible. This line, king of the Jews, is meant to mock him, but it's actually stating the truth. He might not be the king we expect, but he is the king we need. There's your five-minute Bible study for the day. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.